All right, here we are, folks. Second game of the day, third day of the tournament, the San Jose City College Men's Basketball Tip-Off Classic. We have Feather River College with a record of 1-1 one one so far in the season, playing Monterey Peninsula with a record of 2-0. and oh. Third game for each team in this classic, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, wrapping up. The first game was won by Palo Verde over Lassen. And Monterey Peninsula controls the tip, and we're off and running. Going to back that guy in a little bit. Monterey really counts on throwing that ball into their post. Straight away three, no good. Monterey really likes to throw the ball into Parker Hunt. He does a good job down in that post area. Feather River, a little more guard oriented. Like to dribble, penetrate, and shoot the threes. Little runner along the baseline, no good. And here comes Monterey back up the floor. Oh, he lost the ball. He already lost the ball, I thought. But I mean, he did block him, but that's like a guy running into someone at the screen. I thought he lost his control of his dribble. But anyway, out of bounds underneath the Lobos. Box set. They usually... Yeah, they usually just do a diagonal screen. You're going to get a five-second count, so a little bit of payback on that one. If it was a questionable call, and ends up going back to the Feather River. Golden Eagles. Oh, it got deflected. I thought he just threw it back to the that – was, that was – I didn't quite see what happened. Got deflected, went back out of bounds. So still Feather River ball. Monterey Peninsula, very, very soft 2-2-1 press. A lot of ball pick action so they can drive middle. Some tough interior passing there. Those are tough to catch. There was two passes where they were throwing the ball to a teammate about two feet away. Watch it real close on that pass. Real close on that pass. 
And jumping up to block the shot and getting called for the foul was number five for the Lobos. Malik Ross on the foul, getting to shoot two is Marquise Hall Wagner. He misses the first one. Still got a shutout being pitched here. Let's see if they call a violation on that. If he misses it, five moved in after. No, I guess he was close enough. I, I didn't quite see it. Number five slid into the, that slot area for rebounding. Picked up his pass and then dropped it, went and got it again. Got called for double dribble. Nobody scored yet. Oh, I can say if they don't get it, this is going to lead to a layup, and sure enough, it did. It tapped the ball out, and there was three. Three Lobos were there. Go to the other side. There's an open three. No, good job closing out. Josh Carr, <laughs> all the way from Sydney, Australia. Nice little jump shot. <laughs> That's the best three-point shooter, but he didn't make that one. He likes to catch that ball on the left short corner or block. Usually takes, usually passes it or he'll take three dribbles and shoot his little baby hook or come up and under. <laughs> that would be Parker Hunt we're talking about. Postman for the Lobos, Monterey Peninsula. <clears throat> Fed the River has a very unique out-of-bounds play here, and it's been really effective. They're going to end up catching it and attacking hard for a layup. There's the handoff right there, and then they just drive middle usually. That's got a little bit too much bellying up on him there. They, they were lucky on that one. <laughs> Carr picked up the ball. And, T.J. Steed needed to run back over and give him a better angle to pass the ball. That was going to be a turnover if, if the Lobos didn't foul him. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Here comes the handoff. Number three, you get called for another foul. They got two already. You can't believe it. He's running his fingers through his hair. They're just going up a little bit too aggressive. You can't attack him that much. You want to you go wall up, but not, not go up on him. Almost just giving the ref a chance to make a call. A tough little teardrop. We got another call. Might be called on number two, crashing the board. You like to have those kind of calls, the guy crashing hard. Yeah, they're calling it on a uh, Josh Carr. Oh, he's pushing. <laughs> you can see her. I mean, that that was so obvious right under the basket. I get a kick out of guys who put both hands on someone's back and push, and then they act like they're not pushing. You want to push. You, you want to push with your lower leg. You just sort of come on you, sort of root them out a little bit, and it's not as obvious.
Honoré is playing good D. Little spin action. Oh, yeah, good defense. That was good defense that last time. Feather River was sticking to their plan, too. It was just good defense, scrambling, hustling. Went off his leg, out of bounds. Fast paced ball game. Time off for the river. Settle this fellas down here. Score four to two. We'll be back in a moment. Coming to San Jose City College is one of the best decisions I've ever made. Because of City College, I became a better athlete and student. City College has some of the best sports facilities I've ever seen. As Jaguars, we have the opportunity to excel on the court and in the classroom. At City College, I've had the chance to play for amazing coaches and teammates. I know this experience will help me when I transfer to a four-year college. All right, we're back to live action. Monterey's bringing it up after a short timeout. See if Feather River changes their defense. No, they stay man to man. Oh, that's their bread and butter play. Their bread and butter play. They did it, Feather River. They catch the ball in the short corner, and then they got a, a small guard screens across to the postman. He'll catch it right under the basket and just catch it laid in. Turnover by the river. The Golden Eagles. Good hustle on the block. Boom, get that out of here, he says. He hustles down and blocks it. Here's the block. Good job. As our other famous NCS TV commentator, Chris Bosch, says, that's a Wilson burger. Nice drive, a floating right hand shot made by Kenneth Brown. Not able to capitalize on the old fashioned three pointer. Call for an illegal screen. 24, they got him on a bad screen. That's Mark. That would be Lewis Griffin for Feather River. Now they try their little famous play again, see if they could go to the bank two times in a row on it. Not able to capitalize. Feather River guarded it much better that time. Travel. Ref didn't call it. Short. AJ Benator. Bentor getting in to grab that rebound. There's the there's his job as the postman. Does a nice job of passing when the guy's cut to the rack. Feather River is a streaky team. They've been behind in other games and come back. Especially once TJ Steed starts hitting him from the top of the key. Made three three pointers in a row in their first game to get him get him back to a W against San Mateo. And little zone defense. See how the Golden Eagles handle that. And they're grabbing another rebound. A.J. Bentor, good job, A.J. Spin to the middle and try to make a pass to his teammate. Got stolen.
aggressive defense. Dribble got fumbled a little bit and they scrummed for it. Looked like a rugby match. Ended up going to the floor. Called the foul on the Lobos for being a little bit too aggressive. Monterey's defense doing a nice job at disrupting Feather River. I got him at approximately four turnovers. So he might have bumped him out a little bit on that one. I would assume Feather River's going to start scoring a few more points if they're going to score two points every seven minutes. It's going to be a low-scoring game for sure. I'm sure they'll warm up here a little bit. Over the back. Parker Hunt, 6-7. Palm Springs, Beaumont. He's from Beaumont, California, but attended high school in Palm Springs. It's a post. Mesa shoot it. See who they call that one on. Called it on number four. John Nichols. Nicholson. Couple of subs coming in for the river. The Golden Eagles Feather River from Quincy, California. Playing the Monterey Peninsula Lobos from Monterey, California. A little bit too aggressive in the post. Wob, good help on the backside. Good help on the backside. The fronting is first team. This is the third game we've seen in Monterey, and it's the first time someone's actively fronted the post against them. So they were fronting Parker, who's posting up on the left block, his favorite side. They tried to lob over it. And Feather River just came in behind and stole the lob. Good defense. Near turnover, ball deflected. Not an over and back violation. Open three. There we go. There, Feather River got off the schneid. Mikey Johnson hits a three. Little pass off to Dribble that crossed his body. Dribble with the right hand. Tried to throw it to the player on the left side of him. The player left side was cutting to the right, so went out of bounds. Do a little jump stop, fake, and just give him a good pass. We'll solve that problem. Breaks to the high post in a sort of a 1-3-1 one, one set against this zone. Diving for the floor, so Lobo's called timeout. We'll be back. There it is. 
There's the hustle. Growing up, I thought basketball was my best path, one shot to success. At San Jose City College, that all changed. My mentors saw more in me than I saw in myself and showed me that I could be anything. No one in my family had ever graduated from college, but I knew I had an obligation for future generations. At San Jose City College, you can go anywhere you want to go and be anything you set out to be. Discover your brilliance at San Jose City College. All right, we're back in action here. Monterey Peninsula ball on the side. 11 minutes to go in the first half. Low scoring basketball game so far. Lobos trying to run a little special play from the timeout. Looks like the thought was there, but the execution was a little short on the thought. Spin it. Put him in the put him in the ringer. That's the spin cycle. Rinse him off. Here we go. He rinses him off and then spins him. Not a very tough call. I mean, that's just a hammer down. I think that was Marquise Hall Wagner, I believe, who got the foul. He's going out of the ball game right now. One out of two for the Lobos. Oh, he didn't like the call on that one. I'm sure we'll get a chance to see the replay. He drives to his left. Yeah, well, we saw the replay. All we saw was stripes because the camera guy was where he was supposed to be, right under the basket. The referee was in the vision, so we didn't get a chance to prove anybody right or wrong. But bottom line was he gets an old-fashioned three. So Feather River now look coming back a little bit, 9-3. to three. At this pace, we're going to have a 30, 37, first team to 40 is going to win, but I'm sure it's going to pick up. Both teams like the Feather River, especially likes to push it up the floor, so I'm sure they're going to get some fast break and get some better action going here. Turn over to the middle. Steed turned it over. Coach calls flat. That's basically the back pick, straightaway back pick to the guard at the top of the key. This shot and a rebound. Feather River's really hammering down, trying to block shots. So No look pass to the high post. Leads to a turnover. Normally, the no-lookers are supposed to be on penetrations and dishes. But... Yep, there's where the hack, hacking going. They feather was trying to block everything. There's the dry seam hack down right there. And they didn't call that, but then the guy comes in and tips it in. So you keep, you keep swatting down like that. You're going to get called or foul almost every time. That's basically what the, the, the call is reaching or swinging down. The only time you can really do that is when you're right in front of a player. If you do it from the side, they're going to call you for reaching across their body almost every time. If you do it from the back, you might get away with it. We have a 30-second timeout. We'll be back in a moment. NCS TV.
All right, we're back. Right now, I believe we're at the free throw line. Step into the line is A.J. Bentor shooting one shot. Rolls around, hit every part of the rim. No part of the net is in and out. Malik Ross grabbed the rebound, and then T.J. Steed just went in and was able to grab it. Ross wasn't able to clear it out of there quick enough. Hey, he went and got the rebound again. Show him, Malik. Don't let him take that ball from you. Two rebounds in a row for Malik Ross. He's going to shoot it, too. No, he's not. I'm going to say, you get two rebounds in a row, you should be able to shoot it. Yeah, they're fronting. They're fronting the big man down inside, Parker Hunt. They're not getting it into him as easy as they were the last few games. We'll see if that throws their offense off. Got to shoot a tough one. Yep, good defense by Feather River. Three subs coming in. Coach Blake Spurry not real happy with what transpired on that last one. Got to give Feather River credit, though. They were playing good defense, causing that action. Feather River call number five. I think that's just a five out offense. Yeah, that's that's a that's a little bit too much holding. We're gonna get a bonus. Chase Titus doing a little bit too much holding. So we go to line shooting a one and one. I never understood how the referees went and changed the signal for one and one. It used to be they would hold out both hands with one finger and then sort of move them and shake them, whatever, one and one. Or they'd even hold the basketball and show both fingers. Now they, they hold out the, the rabbit ears, I guess you call it, on one hand, small finger, index finger. That's two fingers on one hand to me, but anyway. They, they say it verbalizes so much, it's obvious. If you're, in a, if you're in a gymnasium, you may not hear what they're saying. You think it's two shots. But they do change the rules and, the, and some of the stuff over the years. Tough shot, but he makes it. That's why they got him in there for shooting that rock. Chase Titus on the three. Long three. Over the back. He's flying in from the top. You'll see it right here. Way up over the back. You got to shoot the free throws. Always get a chance to shoot free throws. He's better already. <laughs> no, I hope he's not hurt. But he was he was going to come out, you know, which is a good job by the coach Blake Spearing to make sure he's okay. But he was one foul, so they said you got to shoot it. So Blake, Coach Blake, goes, "You okay to shoot?" And he like jogged out there. You kidding me? Chance to get two free throws? I'm all right, Coach. I think he just got 
hit in the back of his leg. A little stinger or something. Hopefully nothing too serious. We would never speak in jest or talk that way if it was some type of injury that could be a serious type of injury as far as playing time. Didn't affect him enough to miss the free throw, that's for sure, as he makes the first one. He makes the second one. He's still hobbling. I would have figured they would have taken him out. Looks like he wants to go over and come out. Here comes the sub for him. So he might be a little bit more than we talked about. He's going to go see the trainer. Subbing in for him is Jordan Lopez. 6'6", six, six, sophomore from Salinas. Oh, they, they tried to run their special play, but Jordan, Jordan didn't know what was going on. I saw it coming a mile away. And then they're going to do the old screen and bring the shooter to the top. Their best three-point shooter. He just back cuts him. They're going to get a fast break if they run. He should have gone for the layup, the three-point shot nowadays. They don't like to do that. There's a nice pass. Feather River working the ball around, but I'll tell you what, Monterey Peninsula scrambling, but it does not pay off. That was some good basketball by both teams. Johan, Jonah Crumpton Murray hits the three. That was pass, pass, and, and I'll tell you what, Monterey was, was scrambling and running all over. This is the pace Feather River likes. This is the pace they like. I would assume there'd be a timeout, and there is. Timeout, Monterey Peninsula. 18 to 15. We'll be back in a moment. back NCS TV the fast break coast to coast bucket good by Steed TJ Steed there's a passing around right there and they hit the three pointer Jonah Crumpton Murray hits the three pointer Feather River they get him in bunches They were running out on that one, but a little bit too fast. The runner was going so fast he wasn't able to get it where he wanted to for that layup. So it ended up looking like an alley-oop, but it wasn't his fault. It was just too fast for what was going on. Malik brought Ross. Hits a little short, short jump shot. Lobo's up by five with basically five to go. A little more than five. Good rebound. He grabbed the rim. <laughs> I think he grabbed the rim when he went up. Uh, at least he put his hand up there like that's what he was going to do. Tell you what, he'll attack the rim. He will attack the rim. Let's see if someone grabs a rim on this one. If we can see up there by the rim. No, nope, they just get the foul call. That's all right. On the previous rebound, Feather River players come, they come running in from way out. 
We saw that foul earlier going over the back. In fact, that's when uh, Parker Hunt got hurt just a little bit. The player came running in, and I don't know if he jumped and hit it, kicked him in the back of the leg or whatever. He was down there at the trainer's table actually getting his ankle taped. So Misses the one and one. Yeah, they reset the shot clock, but there was no rim, so outside official blows the whistle. Going to be out of bounds underneath with 14 to go on the shot clock, 429 in the first half. Nice shot. Penetrate middle kick to the wide open man in the corner. That's Malik Ross who hits nothing but the bottom of the net. A trifecta, three-pointer, a triple. Oh, we're going to get a four-point play. Are we going to get a four-point play? Call the foul on number zero. Kristen Green shot that shot. He shoots a three and then gets fouled. Bounces around and goes in. Big play. Four-pointer. Down eight a second ago. Now they're only down four. It's always nice to get a four-point play, especially if you're trailing, trying to get back, catch back up with the team. Four minutes to go. Low scoring game. Both teams playing aggressive defense. Oh, they got it into their big man. Yeah, he's the hub of their offense. When they throw it down inside, they cut. That's a little bit too hard. That's a little bit too hard. That's the old excited. I'm going full speed, and then they, it's hard to go full speed and then throw a soft pass. If you could jump stop, make that pass. I don't know, you're going that fast. Maybe it's not possible to jump stop. That's two in a row for Christian Green. Nothing but the bottom of the net again. If he makes one more, we'll call the trifecta. It's a bifecta so far. He's hit two threes. Two threes in a row. Uh-huh. They got an answer for that. John Nicholson says, you make a three, I'll make a three. Offensive pace picking up now. Zero. Oh, didn't get him over the back. Coach Jensen not not liking what happened there. I, you know, I was down here too. I mean, I was down here too. I had the same 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 thought. I thought he went over the back. Nah, you know it's. The guy's got to box out a little bit better. He's had a, he had his hand on it for just a fraction of a second. And then if we get a chance to see that again on the break of this action, we don't need the guy shoot a, a tech. We'll see if we can see that again. You see his hand tap just a little right there. And then he took his hand off and went up and just tipped it in. The guy's got to box out better. You get a big, strong guy like that. I don't want to guess his, his weight, but he's strong. 6'7", 240 maybe. And uh, you got to put a body on him. So they're running up the floor, Coach Jensen. Let's let it be known. Now, we talked about this the other day. I told Coach Jensen, he's got to be careful. California Community College Athletic Association rules. If a coach gets two techs, he's out of the game. Cannot coach the next game. 
And if that happens, he has no assistant coach. I see he's got his son sitting next to him. I think he's maybe in fourth grade. Maybe he could take over the action. I know years ago I was coaching at Columbia College, and I got mad at my players, and I had my oldest son Tyson and I coach for five minutes, but I wasn't kicked out. I was just mad. So anyway, who knows? Coach Jensen got to settle down now. I'm not going to be available to drive the bus. And one. Oh, he's talking. Got to be careful. If you do that in a player's face, they'll get him for a taunt, but he's just saying he's excited. Intensity's picking up. There's their, oh, there's their play. They didn't execute it. They wanted to bring the big guy across and get the screen. They're a little crowded right now. He's going to back him in. Oh. This Feather River is where they're good in the transition. Yeah, he does a hard dribble. The ball went higher. Maybe the ref will say, well, you know what? I'll call T on you too, but just a short frustration by Parker Hunt. That's two fouls on him. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they take him out, protect him for the rest of the half. They can't afford to have him get a third foul in the last two minutes. And here comes the sub for him right now. Noah Simple. 6'8". Out of Queens, New York. One out of two. 30-25. Just under two minutes to go. Where's number zero? He made two threes in a row. You guys can't find him. I guess he's on the bench. It's hard to locate him when he's on the bench. Offensive rebound. Put back by Chase Titus. Whoa, circus shot. My goodness gracious. Mikey Johnson. Mikey or me? Yeah, it's got to be Mikey. There's no C. Here we go. Here's what the Golden Eagles like. Oh, yeah. Kick out for the three. Nice pass. It hit the scoreboard. Up on top of the out of bounds. Pace of the game picking up. Feather River likes it. Watch this. Woo! Oopsie doo. Circus, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. All I know is it was not a normal looking layup, but it went in. It counts two. They're going to give him two. If they gave style points, he'd get two and a half. The score would be 32 to 27 and a half. They don't have a half on the board, so. Set three pointer. Wide open three. Malik Ross. Foul in the backcourt. It'll be a two-shot foul. Monterey Peninsula's over the limit. Look at that, wide open. Jonah Crumpton Murray. It's two shots lefty puts it in Jonah hails from Fresno California Second one, bounced around, didn't drop. Still going to be a little bit of time left, about six seconds after this shot if they wind it all the way down. They're going to bring 11 at the top for the three-pointer. Oh, baby hook. Why not? 
kicked the score to the wrong team. They'll get it straight now. It should be 37-32. 37-30. They, they get the score messed up. They're, they're going to get it straightened out. I think it's I think it's incorrect. We'll see. I don't know. We'll find out here in a second. There's the drive. There's the baby hook. I, 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 I think the score is 37-32. We got it. We actually we have it as 37:30 on our monitor. There it is. They got it fixed. Yeah. What? You know, quick, quick explanation. The table's gonna have a little confusion once in a while. I think they've got a, uh, a red shirt. A couple of the athletes are the helping. San Jose City Day has a, a home football game going on right now. So staff, normal faculty staff, coaches, whatever that run those tables are not here, but they're doing a good job. 37.30 halftime, NCS TV, don't forget, right after this ball game, 3 o'clock, the main game, San Jose City Jaguars would be playing San Mateo, trying to get a 3-0 start for the Jags, and San Mateo comes into the game 1-1, one one. that game will be at 3 o'clock, NCS TV, we'll be back in about 12 minutes or so, get a sandwich, Contact a friend or relative. Tell them to log in NCS TV and watch the second half. Coming to San Jose City College is one of the best decisions I've ever made. Because of City College, I became a better athlete and student. City College has some of the best sports facilities I've ever seen. As Jaguars, we have the opportunity to excel on the court and in the classroom. At City College, I've had the chance to play for amazing coaches and teammates. I know this experience will help me when I transfer to a four-year college. Coming to San Jose City College is one of the best decisions I've ever made. Because of City College, I became a better athlete and student. City College has some of the best sports facilities I've ever seen. As Jaguars, we have the opportunity to excel on the court and in the classroom. At City College, I've had the chance to play for amazing coaches and teammates. I know this experience will help me when I transfer to a four-year college. <laughs>
Coming to San Jose City College is one of the best decisions I've ever made. Because of City College, I became a better athlete and student. City College has some of the best sports facilities I've ever seen. As Jaguars, we have the opportunity to excel on the court and in the classroom. At City College, I've had the chance to play for amazing coaches and teammates. I know this experience will help me when I transfer to a four-year college. <laughs>
Coming to San Jose City College is one of the best decisions I've ever made. Because of City College, I became a better athlete and student. City College has some of the best sports facilities I've ever seen. As Jaguars, we have the opportunity to excel on the court and in the classroom. At City College, I've had the chance to play for amazing coaches and teammates. I know this experience will help me when I transfer to a four-year college. <laughs>
Yeah, they're going to call timeout. Calm the guys down a little bit. Get out there and play better. Now, here's going to be the three-pointer. It's posting hard. Three in the corner. And here we are, we're back to the action. Monterey come out early and he's starting hot in the second half, going up 43 to 30. Coach Derek Jensen calls a quick timeout to settle his guys down and tell them what they need to do. It'll be Feather River ball out of bounds on the side. See what they do, see what comes out. If they do anything different, I mean, they do a lot of dribble weave action. The guards like to penetrate and kick it out for threes. There's the drive. Nice reverse layup. Scored that bucket to get a little confidence. It's always good to score right after a timeout. Keeps driving that baseline. He got away with it. Shot up and missed. They want me to be in the action. I'm dribbling the ball right now. I gave it up. I don't usually do that. I usually just shoot it, but I'm in a chair, so I just got the ball rolled over to me. I gave it back to the official. Here we go. Another big possession for Feather River. Got into the gap. Pulled up. He can do that now. T.J. Steed, if he gets warmed up, the Lobos are going to have to call timeout and maybe throw a little water on him or something because when he gets hot, he can score. Quick timeout with the officials. They're going to set the clock. The uh, little bit short over there. I think I told you there's a football game going on. A lot. The staff spread out. Softball scrimmage. A lot going on on San Jose City campus. So don't have all the normal ex fully experienced people at that table running those clocks. But they got her straightened out. Here comes their play. Oh, that's just, you just can't let. Number 13 just went down. It was right in front of us on this end, this half. And he goes down and sets a little screen in the post. Another block. Parker Hunt. Lobos are getting her out and running themselves. Kenneth Brown, here's the play. Watch the screen, right, down, right in front of your screen. Ooh, boom, right under the basket. Whoever's getting that screen, got to fight through it. Another way to stop that would be the guard that's guarding 13 is deny him the opportunity to even set the screen. Just chest him off his, his cut. You got to do something. I mean, those are just easy layups. I tell you what, Coach Spearing runs the heck out of that play. I mean, it worked last night. Two times in a row when they needed a bucket, and uh, they've worked it today. And I think they—I know they scored two times for sure, and it might be three. They've tried a couple other times; it didn't work. But that's one of their money plays. There they go. That we keep attacking the big man. They get him in foul trouble. That can make a difference. Parker Hunt called for the foul. We get an old-fashioned one attempt at the line. Shooting one. Marquis Hall Wagner. Oh. 
Oh, it didn't make it. We're going to get a foul on a tip. Who are they going to call on? They better not call on the big man. Now it looks like they call on number 11. Didn't box out well enough. Kenneth, here it is. You'll see it. Yeah, good call. Didn't put a body on him. Let him step in there and keep it alive. It's one way, one way to get back in the ball game is make free throws. Clock's not even running. Taking, taking 11 out for a second. Coach got to talk to him about boxing out. He's their best, uh, their tallest wing player that can shoot threes as well as go down in and finish around the bucket. They've got a handful of players that shoot three pretty well, but Kenneth Brown is six foot four. Their other guards are pretty much all under under six feet tall. I don't know what that was. Feather River just come down the floor and nobody picked him up. An uncontested layup. I mean, uncontested layup. Can't have that. Nice little jumper in the corner by number 12, Mikey Johnson. There's their little action screen. And then the point, point guard just rolls back. They tried to run their play again. That time was not successful. You'll see the screen right under the basket, and then the, the little guard who said screen rolls back. And then he missed it, so he ends up getting called for a foul. So A.J. Bentor usually sets the screen. After he sets the screen, he rolled back under the bucket wide open. They threw the ball to him. He missed it. And then out of a little bit of frustration, he fouled on the rebound. That's four fouls. It would behoove Feather River to continue to penetrate, try to get more fouls. Monterey's mixing the defenses up a little bit. Oh, that's just, that's a two on one. Oh my goodness. I thought it was a big time block. I don't know. We'll see it right here. There's a bad pass. Let's see if he gets it with the body. Oh my lord. I guess just too much windmill. Oh, blessed Coach Jensen's self-control on that one. He's well aware of the two foul rule, two technical fouls on the coach. There he goes again, slow-mo. Let's see that. Ooh, I don't know where he got him. I don't know where he got him. You know what? Yeah, the old saying, ball don't lie. Well, the ball didn't lie, but unfortunately for Feather River, and they're faithful. They got, a, they got about 12, 14 fans came all the way from Quincy. Coach Jensen's father, Court, over there at the Oakmont High School in Monterey. Got some fans and friends and relatives here cheering on. Didn't like what they saw on that one. Look at the big man spin baseline. Put it up off the glass. For the tune of 13 points so far. Every time Feather River gets a little bit close. Oop, oh, oop, in and out. Number four finally holding, not letting, not letting Parker Hunt come across, get that power layup. They're double teaming Hunt on the out of bounds play.
Fast break, gonna give, give it back to four for the layup. Sprinting down to get that was TJ Steed after they got the steal on the inbounds. I don't understand. I'm not quite sure what I'm seeing or not seeing. But it's twice Feather River scored, and then the point guard from Monterey just catches ball, dribbles down, and makes a layup, and nobody's anywhere near him. Whoa. Oh, that's a good job. Now they got four on him. They got four on him with 15 minutes to go. Parker Hunt going to have to take a chair or a seat. Go to the sidelines. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of time left. He's got 13 points, a handful of rebounds, a few blocks, two or three assists. So it's going to be up to his replacement, Noah Sample. Sample, 6'8", sophomore from Bishop Kenny High School in Queens, New York. He's going to come in and probably, if he does his job, probably play eight minutes at least. If... If the coach isn't happy with him, then he'll go with somebody else. But that would be Coach Blake Spearing, head coach, Monterey Peninsula. Parker Hunt, four fouls. Going to take a chair for sure. Here we go. 51-42, 15 minutes to go. We'll see what, we'll see what transpires with the big man on the bench. I got some three-point weapons out there, so they have to have to approach the game from a different angle or a different perspective. A little more penetrating, kicking, shooting threes. We got four guards out there. That's that would be Monterey Peninsula. Four guards and, and a single post. Pretty much the same thing Feather River plays, either a single post or actually five out sometimes. 12-point lead. He cashed in on the three-pointer. Reaching in foul. He got to hit the noggin while he reached in a little bit. He goes, me? Well, unfortunately, Mikey, you reached in a little bit too much. So they're at the line for a one and one. Not able to capitalize. Christian Green misses the front end of the one and one. I don't know. That was a pass. Fumble catch. Good assist for fumbling the catch. Ten point ball game. Monterey Peninsula does a nice job. When that ball gets thrown to the post, they don't stand around. They cut, they move. It's tough to guard. Here comes the drive and the deflection and the bucket inside for Feather River. There's the cutting. Cut hard, draw the foul, get a shoot two. Missed his last one. Let's see if he gets going on this one. A little bit more probably what he's used to doing. Christian Green at the line. Made two threes in the first half. Three-point shooter should be able to make free throws. If it's too close, he should back up a little bit, but he made that one. Four 
15 feet for free throws. Almost 20 for the three-pointers. Somewhere in that vicinity. They keep moving that line. I don't know. It used to be 19-9. Now it's 21 or something. Who knows? It's, a, it's long ways. That's why you get three. Good defense. Good defense. Impressed with Monterey. Monterey's scrambling. When that, when that ball gets moved around, they hustle out. And I've seen them scramble and then have to do a re-scramble. They, they play the full 30 seconds. Nice drive, slash to the bucket. It's about the time Feather River starts to make the runs. I've seen it every game they played. They get down and then they tend to come back. I have no idea what that was. The guy lost his shoe and ends up getting a bucket out of it. How, how about that? You lose your shoe, you can't get down the floor, your teammate flips it out, you end up thinking you're going to hustle back on Dean, you end up getting a layup. <laughs> Foul on the right. Here we go. Here's the replay. Now he's down there fixing his shoe. And look at it. He doesn't even have his shoe on. Look at, and he makes the bike. Nah, I'll fix my shoe. <laughs> yeah. Skechers took care of him there on there, wherever he got his shoes from. Didn't have it tied up tight enough. Turnovers leading to layups. Right about the time Feather River got within 10, they make two. Two turnovers that lead to layups. Uh, wheels are coming off. There's the turnover. Full speed layup. Timeout. Feather River. We'll be back in a moment. All right, here we are, folks. Back to the ball game. Scoreboard has us up there at 62 to 46. I know a lot of times our NCS TV actually has the score more correct. But anyway, your monitor's showing 61 to 46. Whatever it is, Monterey's got two layups off of steals. They're battling, they're battling. Not able to get it to go. Everybody's scratching the clawing and jumping and tapping. The foul called. We'll see if they're gonna give him a bonus or two. It's the seventh foul, so if it's not a shooting foul, it'll be a one and one. Monterey doing a great job. They were up 10, I think, when uh, Parker Hunt went out and they've expanded their lead. They're giving him two shots. There must be a controlled tip. First one in. Lewis Griffin at the line. Out of Rancho Cordova. Cordova High School. One of the areas that the Lobos could get better. 
He's boxing out on free throws. He's been a few, oh, they're going to bring the big man back in. Coach says, I don't care. He can play with four fouls. He probably heard the magic word that all players love to hear. Don't play any defense. Don't play any defense. We need you on the floor. I was never good enough to have my coach tell me I don't need to play defense. Little push off. Feather River going to see if they make that run. I've seen them do it every game, or at least the two games prior to this one, Thursday and Friday. He came back and won the first one. against College of San Mateo. Yesterday, playing the host team, San Jose City Jaguars, they were down and clawed back in, but were not able to pull it off. And the Jaguars ended up beating them. We'll see if they can come back on against this Monterey Peninsula team. Attack the rim. Hart, Parker Hunt went over to help. <laughs> Fortunately for him, he didn't get a foul. Would have been a weird situation to come back in with four fouls and foul out within 10 seconds. Now, right, what are we going to do here? We're going to run a play. They're going to run their little cross screen right there. Oh, my gosh. It worked, but he just missed it. Now you should attack him. He's done. He's done. That didn't last long. They did the job. They got the ball to the high post and attacked him. He's out of the ball game with 13 points, a handful of rebounds, a few assists. Five fouls at 11 07. 62 to 51 is the score. We'll see. Whether or not that has that big of an effect or not, I do know one thing. I've seen him play three times, and he's extremely. Oh my! I was gonna say they did it again. They didn't box out. We got two shots. He missed the first one, so they're gonna get another one. Assistant coach is yelling, "Box out! Box out!" No kidding. Uh, they did. He missed both free throws. Break for the Lobos. Lost their post man, but at least they didn't lose two points. Give up two points. Turnover. Bringing in one of their main ball handlers. That's what you call tack in the rim. Marquise Hall Wagner. They got it under 10. It's a well, well, well. Kenneth Brown attacking, attacking the rim. Nice, strong move. They throw it to the corner, watch him attack. Nice move. Strong attack the rim. That was a long rebound. Sometimes you just get a fluke of the bounce. I wouldn't say it was necessarily his fault for not boxing out. It just took a long rebound. Shuffling the feet. Traveling. Out of bounds on the side. Feather River. Golden Eagles down 11, 10 24 to go in the ball game. 10 23 on your monitor. They crashed the boards on that one. I see a run coming. I just sense a run. Try 
Tried to throw a long baseball pass. Monterey Peninsula player put his hand up, deflected it. Otherwise, it would have been a breakaway, which probably would have caused Monterey Peninsula's head coach, Blake Spearing, to call a timeout. Because Just attacking straight line and getting layups. I think there was a little back screen at the top of the key. I had my vision blocked, but I'm pretty sure that's what transpired. He's just going to get in and shoot a hook. They're not stopping that. They run that play all night until they do something about that. Let's see what's going to happen here. Both teams scoring a lot better this half than they were the first half. One of the Feather River players, we got a timeout. We'll come back after this timeout. Coming to San Jose City College is one of the best decisions I've ever made. Because of City College, I became a better athlete and student. City College has some of the best sports facilities I've ever seen. As Jaguars, we have the opportunity to excel on the court and in the classroom. At City College, I've had the chance to play for amazing coaches and teammates. I know this experience will help me when I transfer to a four-year college. All right, we're back here. The uh, there was diving on the ball on the floor for the loose ball, and the Monterey Peninsula player was basically sort of on all fours, and then he stayed on his knees and and, and straightened up from the waist and brought his elbows about the floor. Feather River was thinking, well, the way he's on all fours now, he's moved he's moved two of those pivot feet, so he should be traveling. Uh, I don't think the referees were buying that because they're not used to refereeing people that have four four appendages on the floor at one time. Now, if you're on the floor and you stand up, they'll call traveling all the time. And, of course, they, they make that confusing for us basketball enthusiasts that watch the NBA because I know we've all seen many a time an NBA player on the floor and, stand up or whatever with the ball they don't call traveling but you know what the NBA is about if you're not sure it's about entertainment they're not going to stop the action because of something like that so this is about entertainment too but the rules are a little bit different irregardless irregardless of what's going on they're going to they did not call the travel. There's a drive of the bucket. He got tripped up a little bit. I don't know if we'll be able to see that. I couldn't tell if he got, if the player stuck his foot out or he tripped himself. But that doesn't make a difference. They called the foul. And he's got two shots. Because they're in the double bonus. It's not exactly a free throw clinic today, folks. The earlier game. At one time, one of the teams missed six or seven free throws in a row. Monterey Peninsula here is having an opportunity to get some points, and they're missing their, their fair share of free throws as he missed two in a row. And lucky break there on the back door cut. One off the, that, the player that came over to help on defense's leg. That's a tough pass to throw to someone who's already basically running away from you full speed to the basket. Okay, let's settle down here. Here we go. Tough shot. Tough shot. Charlie Costa made that one. It was a good shot. Yeah, they're just attacking. They like to get it to number three, Marquise Hall Wagner in that deep in that left corner and then he just attacks his strong right hand going to the going to the rim. Here comes the running layup right here. This is a tough shot.
Marquise Wall, Marquise Hall Wagner makes the first. That lead just continues to hover right around 10 or 11 points. Feather River's got to cut it down a little bit here if they really want to put some pressure on Monterey. Can't keep it around 10, 9, 10, 11 the entire game when you get down at the end, but then it really takes a miraculous effort. They get it down to about seven. Or, you know, obviously five or six, whatever, be really make the game interesting and make Monterey start to think a little bit more. They like to do this little back trick and bring Levin up the top to shoot. Oh, he stepped out of bounds. The ref didn't see it. He was right in front of me. I was pretty sure that. Oh, my goodness. There you go. Malik Ross for a three-pointer. That was big shot. Big shot. Feather River is really playing aggressive. Good defense, and he just made a tough three-point shot. Good hands. Good defense, Monterey. Whoa. My goodness gracious. I tell you what, they're attacking the rim. Guys are playing hard. Bodies going everywhere. There's the three-pointer right there. Step back three. Like nothing to it. And here comes the drive. Watch this action. I'm not sure where the foul was again either, but it sure looked, it looked scary. Those are tough calls. Those are tough calls. The guy's going up, coming at full speed. You jump up, player falls to the ground, you fall over him. Makes the first one, Malik Ross. Out of Portland, Oregon. Makes the second one. Makes them both. <laughs> Tried to spin back. Got tangled up with the Monterey player. Everybody's in the double bonus. Everybody's in the double bonus now, so any foul's gonna be two shots. Everybody's got the little shoe squeakies out there trying to draw the sweat, dry, dry off that sweat, or the wet spot on the floor. It's that time of the ball game where the guys are all pretty much sweaty. They found a towel down there, they're gonna dry it off just a bit. Don't forget, coming up here at three o'clock, Host team San Jose City Jaguars will be playing San Mateo. In and out. Marquise Hall Wagner not able to cash it in. And we're going to get one more. This is them both. Somebody got a free one. Got a little bit of a shot. He's tough under the boards. He doesn't like it. He's going to go to the sideline. You know, I'm sure it was inadvertent. It wasn't cheap or dirty, but I'll tell you what, doesn't make a difference with cheap, intentional, whatever. It still hurts. Green and popped Levin up to the top. Great hustle. Oh my lord. That's just tough. You know, it's not their fault. I mean, we're we're diving and we're scratching and we're hustling. And uh, they say shot clock 
does not reset, so is it a shot clock violation? Okay, okay, good job, good call then. They were hustling like crazy for the ball, and I thought he wanted to have it reset, so. He did the old tap the head, said shot clock should not have reset, so. We're back at live action. I try to explain the best of what I think is transpiring out here. There's that drive from the left corner to the right hand of the middle with a bucket by Lewis Griffin. Attacking the rim, Charlie Costa. Keeping that 14 point lead, the cushion that the Lobos want to have. Gonna back him in. Oh, here we go. Went with the left hand, not able to get it. I tell you what, that guy's a pest. Charlie Costa, I've seen him the last two or three days. Get balls that shouldn't be getting. Scrapping, hustling. Quick hands and he doesn't, he doesn't give up on the play. He stays with him. Here comes the drive in. There's his bucket. Costa on the earlier play. All right, they got a high pick, and then 11 is going to come to the top after they go off it. There goes 11 to the top, but he doesn't have to pass it because he gets a layup. Feather River not real sure how to guard it. Good minutes by the young man from Queens. We got a timeout or what? All right, we're back. It'll be, I believe, Feather River with the ball out of bounds. We'll find out. All I know is the score is 77-61 with 4.46 to go in the ball game. Monterey Peninsula, I would say their defense has been the main difference. Their defense has been better than Feather River's. They've been aggressive. They close out. When they have to scramble, they really hustle out on the scrambles. And then there was a time here in the second half where I thought Feather was going to be able to come back. And their point guard just dribbled down and made a layup. Just went right through them like there was nobody there. Made a couple layups. It is Monterey's ball, so he's got to stay. There was a, it went out of bounds. We cannot run the baseline. It's not after a made bucket. Feather River in a 2-2-1 two, two, press. There goes the play. Oh, number 11 going to push off. They just drive to the basket. They just drive to the basket when they act like they're going to run a play. And Feather River's trying to D them up and... They bring up those two guys that are on the free throw line, and there's no help down below. They just drive and shoot in. Every time it's a 10-second count, they, they stack two guys around the free throw line, and it opens up the whole, whole, back, the whole line to the basket. Oh, yeah. Another bucket. They're going to get number 11 out because 11 out, 11's talking trash. I think he got it called on the tee. You're going to face him up after he scores the bucket. No taunt. Absolutely, they will not accept the taunt at this level. You see that, unfortunately, these young men, you know, they do that at the NBA level. 
they can hoof and woof and huff and puff and blow the house down and all that stuff. But no, they did not call a taunt, but Coach Sparing saw that he was setting them up. So he, somehow or another, they stopped the action, and Coach was able to get him out and call, you know, tell him that we don't accept that, don't do that. You got to be able to make that little free throw jumper. Out of bounds, reset the shot clock, 3.33 to go. Dribble weave, tried a little, little shuffle pass. Threw it away. Runner by TJ Steed. Might be a little bit too late. They're going to play it to the end. They're going to play hard. I've seen miracles, but not sure if this one can happen. Bucket good and the foul. Good passing by Monterey. Attacking strong. Attacking strong, making the passes. There it is on the replay. Good hustle, but landed on top of him after trying to block the shot. Turnover by the ref. He wasn't looking. He threw the ball to him. We'll try it again. There we go. Referee's throwing the ball to the shooter, and he was looking somewhere else, and the ball went basically past him. We gave the turnover to the referee. Yeah, milk the clock a little bit. Five out, little dribble weave. The old, the old North Carolina. Four corners. Used to run this back when there was no shot clock. They'd milk it, milk it, milk it, and then get a layup or get a foul like that right there. Oh, he missed the shot. Missed down at the other end as well. It'll be out of bounds. Catch, catch and shoot. Nice shot. Backpedaling. Tough shot when you're, you're backpedaling, able to regain your leg strength and get enough oomph on that to make that shot. There's that scrappy guy I was talking about. I've seen him do that. I've seen him do that more than once. Turn around and just take the ball from somebody. Timeout. 124 to go.
All right, here we are, folks. Back at San Jose City College Gymnasium, Percy Carr Basketball Court, San Jose City College campus. Day three of the San Jose City Tip-Off Classic. This game's about ready to wrap up. Looks like Monterey Peninsula's going to go to 3-0 and on the season. Feather River will drop to 1-2. and But more importantly, 3 o'clock. Come on back or stay tuned for San Jose City Jaguars off to a 2-0 start playing College of San Mateo. Comes in with the game of a record of 1-1. One one. So it should be an exciting ball game. They've had some good battles over the last couple years. That'll be the next game on NCS TV. We're all busy on NCS TV today. Two football games and four basketball games being covered throughout Northern California. We're glad to have you at this one and flip around, watch some of the other ones if you want. He's gonna get a chance to add to his leading scoring here. He's gonna get a double bonus. Gonna get a shoot two more for Malik Ross. He's a 6'2 sophomore out of Portland, Oregon. Already has 25 big points. Going for 26 and 27. Smooth stroke at that free throw line. I guess it's pretty hard not to give him the Chevrolet player of the game. Give that scholarship to his college. I'm playing, I'm doing that for the mom and dad and the grandma and grandpas. They know what that is. Young folks don't even know what that is. They know, I know you know what a Chevrolet is, but you may not be sure what the Chevrolet scholarship's all about. Ask them, they'll explain it to you. Here we go. Not much left, a minute. They'll milk it and then just shoot it. Feather River more than likely will not foul. There's no need to. It's pretty hard to imagine they can run a 19-point play in the last minute, so no reason to really foul. Other than the fact that you maybe want to try to block a guy's shot, which is just what happened right there. Tyron Williams stepped in to try to affect the shot by Matthew Gallagher. He'll get a shoot. I tell you what, end up with 85 or 86 points is pretty amazing because when that game started, I didn't think there was going to be a whole lot of points scored. Well, we're clearing the bench now. A couple of young men haven't had a chance to play come in for Monterey. Let's talk about number one, Jamison Paul, and number 10, Jordan Lopez misses both free throws. Jameson Paul, sophomore out of Pacific Grove. Jordan Lopez from Everett Alvarez High School in Salinas. You know what? He goes, I'm going to score. I don't play all that much. Kylan, that's Kaylin Sanders shot that one. This will be it right now. They're going to dribble it out. They'll dribble it out. And it's going to be the final score, 85-68. Monterey Peninsula moving to 3-0. and Feather River drops to 1-2. and Don't forget, right around 3 o'clock, the next ball game, NCS TV, will be bringing you right here from the Percy Carr Gymnasium. We'll be starting about 10 minutes after 3. So come on back. And we'll hear from you, and you can see us at that time. This is Denny I taking a short break with our producer, Dion I, on NCS TV.